It could make up for the finale, that's for sure. I don't know, what, what does that mean, make up for the finale? There's nothing to make up for. It could be a, you know, we know, we know, we're sorry. Ending a TV show at the right time is no easy task. If all is going well, then the audience always wants more. And if you've outstayed your welcome, then the final episode has these unrealistic expectations on its shoulder to not only neatly tie everything together, but to sort of wash the bad taste of the last few seasons out of their mouth. But when should a TV show end? After making my video about the decline of The Simpsons, I received all sorts of comments. Mostly positive, but inevitably there were some negative reactions from loyal Simpsons viewers. And sandwiched between the totally non-emotional insults about my voice, intellect, and presumptions about my appearance were some very valid criticisms. The main defense was, no one is erasing the older seasons. You can still watch them anytime. So should they really have to stop producing new episodes for the remaining audience to enjoy? And that's a good point, but it made me realize that this really comes down to a fundamental difference in how we view television. Are TV shows just entertainment, or are they art? It is show business, so every project possesses a mixture of both. Even the most commercially driven fodder entertainment has artistic elements, and the most pretentious or artistic shows have to make money, or they get cancelled. It's a delicate balance, but when a show finds the sweet spot, the perfect blend of entertainment and art, then it achieves true success and becomes part of the zeitgeist. This is when people become more protective of the artistic integrity of the show, as they're emotionally connected to it. It now means more to them than just a show. It becomes a part of their lives. But some genres are more likely to be safeguarded than others. Funnily enough, the more effort you put into making the show high quality or meaningful, the less leeway it has, as it presented itself as something with real purpose, and to lose that betrays its original promise to its audience. A soap opera is generally considered pure entertainment. It doesn't have to be realistic, as the large number of expanding characters all end up testing out romantic relationships with one another. Its main job is just to keep the show on air, with cliffhangers and incremental developments. Procedural shows like CSI, House, Grey's Anatomy, anything to do with cops, lawyers, doctors, all have a lower standard. Each episode is somewhat standalone, with some light, consistent through-line narratives. You're meant to know what you're getting, as the show always follows the same formula. Multi-camera sitcoms are where the lines start to blur. Generally, they're still following a formula that always works to some degree, but the audience usually starts to notice a drop in quality or an increase in more desperate or outrageous storylines, usually after the sixth or seventh season. Drama series that have a stated goal, like solving a case or escaping or finding a partner, usually begin to lose artistic integrity after the original goal is achieved, as now we're just living in the aftermath and it feels directionless. Culturally relevant comedy series can only really be culturally relevant for a certain period of time, and the characters and plot points start to feel out of place if they stay on the air too long, although comedy has a lot more room for error. But drama or thriller series with impressive character arcs are usually considered more of an art form, almost like an exceptionally long movie. And these shows have to end at the right time. Otherwise, all the investment that the audience put into the characters, world building, and plot feel wasted. Television is a business, and that means it's entertainment that exists to make money and keep people working as well as watching. But it is also art. It has to reflect society and human nature or we lose interest as we can't relate to it. So it is a business, but human beings aspire to the divine. Whether it be in music, sports, technology, cooking, architecture, film, or any art form, we want perfection. To have something close to flawless that just stands on its own. Something that uses the least materials, yet manages to achieve the most. When a show is at its best, the audience feel that they're in trusted hands, and by tuning in, are actually participating in the show's creation. As they're aware that if they collectively stop watching, it will come to an end. 
This makes it a symbiotic relationship between the audience and the creators, with the viewers now aspiring with the creators, willing them to fulfill the show's potential. But for the creators of the show, they're also just trying to put food on the table, because getting the show on air is an achievement in itself. Every summer, each network receives roughly 500 elevator pitches, of which they'll request just 70 scripts. They then narrow that down to 20 pilot scripts. And of those 20 pilots, only four to eight shows make it to air for a full season. That makes it roughly 1% of the pitched shows. But the risk doesn't end there, as 65% of shows then get cancelled after just one season. With such big productions of hundreds of cast and crew, it only takes one person dropping the ball for the show to potentially fail. Take a show like Breaking Bad. The premise is decent, but it's risky. There's so many versions of that show that would have failed if it were just a little bit too funny or a little bit too serious. But because of the execution from the writers, cast and crew, something special was created. But if you changed just one or two small things, then the show may not have worked. Jesse, it's me. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I just want to talk. Oh, behave. So having survived all of these tough tests, when the audience finally tune in to the second or third season of a series because they've heard it's good, they've missed out on several years of hardship for the creators, who are only now starting to find popularity. But despite all of this, the audience of a more artistic show still want the series to wrap up before there's a deterioration in quality. We sort of assume that the creators will just intuitively know when they're creatively spent or when they're in decline. But it's unrealistic to expect that level of self-awareness, as well as not really grasping how much responsibility that they're shouldering as they're hiring hundreds of people, providing themselves financial security in a high-risk career, as well as helping to build the careers for the cast and crew, who are finally part of a hit series. So to just end the show that everyone else wants to continue because of your alleged artistic integrity makes you seem like you're ungrateful for the rare lightning in a bottle that you've stumbled upon. This is what makes people that view TV as merely entertainment correct, as it's a business and product to be enjoyed and consumed. It's neither financially smart nor being a good team player to wrap it up and move on at its peak. But artistically, that's almost what's so appreciated about the decision if you get it right. It's looking at the bigger picture and sacrificing the immediate social approval or natural incentives like money for a greater cause, to have created something that will stand the test of time. But then what about the main commenter's points? If it's a comedy series or even just an amazing first season of a drama, can't you just enjoy the years of the show that you liked? Separate them from the others, as they're not going anywhere. In many ways you can, and personally, when I put on the American Office, I find it easy to just start at season two and stop at the end of season seven. But artistically, it becomes harder to claim the show is one of the best ever, as the more weak seasons are produced, the more diluted the overall product becomes. For me, the American Office has six great seasons. Some are stronger, some are weaker, but it's overall legendary. So out of nine seasons, two thirds of it are high quality. But if the bizarre post-Michael Scott seasons continued for over 30 years like The Simpsons, then I would be saying that only six out of 30 seasons are worth watching, making the show only 20% high quality. Meaning it's redefined what the majority of it was, and it's now difficult to attach yourself to it. When it comes to art, it's all about what's in the frame and what's left out of it. For example, if we took the Mona Lisa and then instead of framing it as Da Vinci did, it was just a section of an ever expanding canvas that had some Jackson Pollock splattered around, then some pop art, a few cartoons and charcoal drawings thrown in, would you really appreciate that fraction of the painting as much if it's surrounded by other cheap or tonally different art? Surely most will be left asking, why didn't you just stop? 
it was a masterpiece in its totality before you continued. And that's the key philosophical debate of entertainment versus art when it comes to television. So when should a TV show end? According to the entertainment side, whenever it stops making money, as that's when the symbiotic relationship between creator and audience comes to an end. According to the artistic side, whenever it stops making sense for the characters. When it comes to soap operas, there doesn't seem to be an end. That's the point. This is why soaps like Carnation Street have been running since 1960, and Days of Our Lives has been running since 1965. Procedural shows like CSI can run for 15 years, and even their spin-offs like CSI Miami for 12 years. Grey's Anatomy is still running in its 17th season. But once we get to sitcoms, it becomes harder to judge. In the UK, with some notable exceptions, their most famous comedies like The Office or Faulty Towers tend to only have two seasons, with six episodes per season which leaves the audience clamouring for more as they never outstay their welcome. Quality, not quantity, that's what, that's what counts. Long-running animated series seem to peak within the first decade as they start to lose cultural relevancy or become formulaic. But when it comes to The Simpsons, can idealists really say that the old seasons would still be as beloved if the show was a product that just began and ended in the 90s and went out on top? Simpsons creator Matt Groening says, My standard answer is there's no end in sight, because any time I speculate on the show ending, the people who work on it and diehard fans get very upset. So I always say there's no end in sight, which fits perfectly into the TV is just entertainment sensibility. Does having a few more seasons of Family Guy or South Park really detract from it? Or because of its comedic tone and contained storylines, does it just create more opportunities for culturally beloved moments, even if they're fewer and farther between? Live action sitcoms such as Friends, Seinfeld or Frasier usually have an expiration date before the cast start aging and their characters seem somewhat out of place in the modern world. For instance, Friends wouldn't be as easy to connect with if all the characters were always looking at their phones and instead of focusing on their intimate relationships with one another, were worrying about their social media and their broader relationship with the world. Friends creator Marta Kaufman summed it up as, the show is about that time in your life when your friends are your family. So once the characters began to start their new families, they decided it was time to wrap it up as it wouldn't make sense to continue. High quality drama series have a shorter lifespan. When Breaking Bad creator Vince Gilligan chose to end the multi-award winning show after five seasons, his rationale was perfectly in line with the TV is art sensibility. He stated, I was very anxious about the idea of folks suddenly moving on and saying, is that show still on the air? I used to watch it, it used to be good. I'd wanted folks rather to say, don't end it now. That's what I wanted, and that's what we got, thank goodness. So it was me as much as anybody who said, I want to leave the stage at a high point and not go past the high point. But cutting a show short isn't always the solution. Like when Game of Thrones show creators D.B. Weiss and David Benioff were perceived to rush the final two seasons to focus on new exciting opportunities like a huge Netflix deal and the next Star Wars trilogy, fans were left massively disappointed. They had invested so many years into the story as it gradually unraveled and felt dissatisfied with the sudden overnight character arcs, rushed romances and fatiguing battle sequences. The show had been a global phenomenon, but after its finale was kicked out of the zeitgeist and forgotten about, only for the creators to then pull out of the Star Wars trilogy anyway. So although it feels like less is more, Audiences are harder to gauge than we usually presume with the benefit of hindsight. Ultimately, every show needs to maintain its tonal integrity. If it shifts its comedic style from wry to slapstick, or goes from slow moving to breakneck speed, the audience just won't feel connected to it anymore, almost like the same actors are just performing in a new show under the same name. A TV series also must fulfill its original promise to its audience before its finale. 
Whether it be a romantic arc like Ross and Rachel or Jim and Pam, or a dramatic arc like the killer needs to be caught, the case needs to be closed, or the lead character needs to finally fall. If they never broke out of prison in Prison Break, or Winter Never Came in Game of Thrones, then the show would have to be defined as a failure. But all of these are semi-entitled opinions, because we've come to expect so much from the talented creators, cast, and crew. Maybe we should just appreciate these magic TV moments when they occur. And who cares what happens afterwards? Just be grateful we will always have those scenes, episodes, and seasons to enjoy. But I think there will always be a part of all of us that wants to see that slam dunk, that hole in one shot where everything came together, lasted for years, and ended right on time. But those are just some of my thoughts, and this isn't so much a statement as it is the start of a conversation. So leave a comment down below. When do you think a TV show should end? Has anything ever truly achieved a perfect finale? Did this video end on time, or blather on past its peak, destroying all of my credibility on the topic? And what's the most disappointed you've ever been with the end of a series that you were truly invested in? And if you've made it this far, I would appreciate it if you liked and subscribed, as it's still early days for the channel, and it really helps the video reach a larger audience.